Okay, peeps. What have I just done? Well, if I take the board off and show you with a made board. <coughs> now, the four holes will be tapped uh, three mil, and I've got. Uh, 3mm bolts to thread in. I've got a 3mm tap on its way, it should be a Thursday. Uh, well in time for my Friday uh, deadline. Now then, <coughs> excuse me, that's it, excuse me, I've still got remnants of uh, my sore throat last week. Um, and these other two holes here for wires soldered to the posin neck pads and they will go through into the interior where um, an AC to DC oops where am I where an AC to DC uh, unit is and that will sit in there and then all the wires will be um, connected up here. That's the mains, so that will go on up to the bayonet cap. And this is plus or minus 12 volts. And these run these uh, bulbs really efficiently. Yes, I know that uh, it's making the bulb a bit expensive to do, but what you've got to remember is this bulb, unless this unit, um, where am I? Oh, I'm off camera, aren't I? This bulb, unless this unit fails, will not go out completely. When a normal um, CFL or LED goes um, bad, in the majority of cases, you don't get any light at all. It goes dead, full stop, end of story. But because these are wired in series, resistor and three LEDs, and then 19 in parallel, it means that you could have four or five rows dead through failure, but you would still have light. And you wouldn't have the failures on all four boards. You'd only have the failures on the board that they're failing on. That's why I call it the repairable bulb. Because you can repair it. The resistors are 560 ohms. The um, The resistors are 560 ohms and the LEDs are 3528 LEDs. So, you know, it's, um, it's a good uh, lighting system. So, uh, I can't remember whether I said it in another uh, video, but anyway, I'll say it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these boards are capable of being put that up there. Sorry, I'm trying to get everything on camera for you. Right. Okay. Now, these boards can be wired in parallel, 12 volts, two in series, and then in parallel, 24 volts, all together in series, 48 volts, 
and then 250 volts or 110 wherever you are in the world whatever your voltage is so you know it's not um, it's not just a mundane CFL lamp LED lamp and I, I've used these for a couple of years now in the prototyping stage it's only now I've started um, coming up with uh, the production model and by production I don't mean I'm going into production but it, if anybody wanted to buy one they could um, I don't, I, I'd have to work out price, I've no idea <coughs> I mean for its ability of repairability and um, you know that that is protect, protected from the 12 volt boards by a 3D printed system. I mean, uh, I've seen uh, on videos people opening up a bulb and the mains are really, really close to the low voltage side. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it takes longer to work out how you're going to do it than it is to actually do it. I mean, these boards per board takes me 10, 15 minutes. If that, I've never timed myself. And I'm not rushing. I just plod along as normal as you've seen on the videos. Okay, so that's that bit. I'll finish. Yeah, I'll finish off doing these two here. And oh, by the way, this is all 3D printed. Um, and all I did was I went into Thingiverse, found a box, readjusted the measurements in simplified uh, 3D to what I wanted and the height that I wanted and uh, that was it and the, st the pins that I had printed again in Thingiverse I just put in um, the search for rod and uh, these came up I'll leave the link down below to both of them so if you want to copy me you can or you can use your own way of fixing but uh, I do, I do uh, impress upon you that having that, okay, that's going to be in there. And so it's going to be, have that barrier, but it doesn't stop mains coming onto the light board. Okay. Um, quirky accidents do happen. So if you grab it and it's live, bingo. You, you know, toast um, or waffle, depends where you are in the country, in the world rather. Um, so what I do is I put them in a jar, the beetroot jar and the honey jar were sort of by accident. Um, I can't remember what I was doing now, but uh, yeah, it was um, purely by accident. I th I th I think I know what it is. Like. Yeah, I, I think I know what it is. I, I got a uh, beetroot jar, and I, I, instead of having all these all over my bench, I thought, ah, put them in the jar and take out what I need. And when I dropped the first one in, I realised that it was almost the same height. I had a eureka moment. No, you don't reek. I reek. Um, so yeah, I was uh, quite chuffed with that. Purely by accident I discovered that. So, guess who's saving their honey and beetroot jars now? Or any jar that tall. I think it's 95mm, um, 100mm, something like that. <laughs> if I remember, I'll measure it for you. People. Oh, there you are. Almost finished. I put two pads 
on the bottom just to take up the uh, gap in the, uh, in the bottom of the glass so that it then goes on nice and tight now there's a hole there drilled in the side of the lid And there's a corresponding one on the other side. And what that's for is you'll see that I've taken out the uh, as you can see I've taken out the uh, seal at that point on both sides. Um, and that is so that air can come in and out as this gets warm. It, I could hold, after five or six hours of this being on, I could hold it like this, no problem at all. And in, even in a clean closed space, this glass it ain't going to have, have any heat damage to it. <laughs> and. Uh, this just slips into the two holes that I drilled for the pegs and uh, two fixing holes for the ring. Now the next stage will be dismantling a CFL lamp to get the bayonet housing off and then these will be soldered into the bayonet cap and then holes drilled in the side to uh, screw it together and these screws aren't long enough to reach the centre so there's no worry of uh, contact with the mains and then uh, it's finished Another repairable mains bulb. A dead CFL. Didn't think I had it. I was going through boxes and uh, I found one. So now I'm going to show you how to get the bayonet end off safely. Because if you break this glass, the powder inside is poisonous and you don't want to be getting that into your bloodstream of any, in any way, shape or form. Now, now you can protect your, your hand with a toilet roll centre, a uh, kitchen roll centre, uh, any sort of means of protection including a tea towel, cloth of any kind, um, what I'm going to use is a glove because uh, I find that better and I'll be using the so I wrap the uh, toilet roll centre around a hacksaw blade um, here's the tea towel out of the way um, the bit that we're doing goes on the top of the bulb like that All right. Okay, let's have some fun. Now don't try going at this like a bull in a china shop. Treat it as though you try to break into an egg without busting it. And just gentle strokes with the saw. Hardly any pressure whatsoever. When it starts to bite, just turn the bulb a little bit and do the next bit and then we go on to the next bit and you carry on all the way around until you've got the cap to a point where you can put a screwdriver in and just lever it away from the bulb section
Ideally, do this outside just in case it, your glass did break. And you can put it straight in the bin. Don't try and attempt to take the end off with the glass broken because that's when an accident will really happen and you don't want that. So it's best to bin it and wait until you can get another bowl. And they're already dead anyway, so you're not um, you're not losing any anything like a, a working bowl. I wouldn't be doing this to a working bowl. And I can almost see the end of the site, so it doesn't take me long. These bobs are toughish, but don't let that fool you. They're very, very easy to break. I know. I talk from experience. Nearly there. Then we'll see if we can break this open with the with the um, screwdriver. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there is a crack there. It hasn't fully come apart. So I'm going to carry on. There goes one. We're away with the fairies. Whoops. <laughs> Side cutters. What we're going to do is get in there and cut those cables. I don't know if you can uh, see. Right. Now with this piece, put it straight in the bin. If you've got um, an old uh, jiffy bag that's uh, thick and um, tough, not one of those cheap nasty things, put it inside the jiffy bag and put it in the bin then. Okay, I'm going to do that now. We've got uh, the bulb out of the way and in the trash. We're now going to uh, get the electronics out, which is fairly straightforward. And once you've uh, got the board at a suitable angle, I don't know if you can see that. Cables down inside there. And what I'm going to do is try and cut them. Without doing Oh, it's a capacitor. It's on the other side by the look of it. Ah. This capacitor was what I thought was the cables, but it wasn't. They're here. And, um... I'm going to cut them close to the board because I want to be able to get hold of them to, uh... pull it out of, uh... The um ah, that's why this one went. This capacitor is uh, puffed up, which means that it's, uh, it's gone dry, probably short circuited, and took everything else with it. Oh, perfect! Look at that. Excellent. Nice and tight down to the lid. Oh, this is going to be great. Right, now then.
Grab a little more. Put a bit of. Oops. No, not both wires, just one wire. And that one's going up to which one? The far one. Oops, it's easy. Here we go. This one out. Now we get the other one out. Get rid of that bit of solder. There's the other one. Just fit around the edge. Not excessively, just to take the uh, sharpness off. I just run it around the outside where we cut. Again, not uh, mad or uh, roughly because uh, it doesn't need it, it just needs a, a little. Uh, there you go, just so you don't, you know, it doesn't cut the skin. What to do is I like to put a mark. Where I'm going to drill only one and then I will mark one of the four uprights. I don't know if you can see that. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just mark the one upright like that. Alright, and then corresponding, it doesn't have to be spot on, just so you know which, which hole you're going to be screwing into when this has been uh, drilled. So it doesn't need to be spot on, as long as it's, you know, you've got it there, and you've got it there, and that's good enough. Alright? So let's get a drill. We we'll just double check where we are. Yep, that's there, that's there. That'll do. And then we'll just stick a hole. That's it. We're in there. All I've got to do is just draw that gently. Okay, like that. Here are the screws, which I showed you on the other video. And then what you do there's a hole there, there's a hole there. And the two blue sections are virtually identical. I started. Don't try rushing it. Make it nice and steady and you'll get going. And again you don't have to uh, do it up tight tight just till it stops. And then you go on the other side, change the drill over. And the other side. Mm. 
and be careful that it start off slowly otherwise you could end up with a drilling of four like I did the other day there we go and we'll take the screw out And then we come over here, put that screw in. You've got to take these out to wire it up, but I'm just doing it like this to show you exactly how to go about it because this is the important bit. Once it's threaded, it goes straight in, no problem at all. There we are. Okay. Now that's a bit off upsided, right? But uh, it'll still work. It'll still hang in the fitting. It won't hang, you know. It won't be sort of like this sort of business. Oops, sorry. It won't be this sort of business. You know, it'll still be hanging straight down. All right, my friends. There you are. All done and dusted. All wired up. Now let's put it in and see if it works. Well there you are folks, that's how you build a repairable bulb. That's the end of this uh, set of videos and um, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, I would uh, appreciate it if you could uh, Subscribe if you want to. You know, I was holding a gun to your head. What did I do with my shotgun? Um, yeah, uh, if you like the video, thumbs up, be nice. Oh, don't forget to hit the bell icon and uh, you'll be notified every time I upload. Uh, which I hope I'm doing my very best to uh, stick to every Friday and uh, get myself uh, back in because I've been haphazard over the years. I'm trying to uh, get a bit more stable, shall we say, in video making. All right then, till next time, when we're in the kitchen. Bye. Oh, and thank you for watching.